Hi, I'm Dan, and today I'm building a compact white PC for my wife. It will be a sacro-thin build with an RX 6800 XT, a white mesh case with custom multicolor side panels. And this project took forever because every single part had to match perfectly. Before we start, here are the parts. A white mini ITX motherboard from Colorful on the B760 chipset. It has a USB-C header for the front panel, another USB-C on the back, solid I.O. on board Wi-Fi and dual M.2 slots. Colorful isn't well known outside mainland China, but it's growing fast. I actually prefer its BIOS over Gigabytes and unlike the no-name brands, Colorful ships real firmware updates. I've already flashed the latest microcode, so 13th gen Intel CPUs run noticeably cooler. It also has white finish on the PCB, which matches the theme. Cooling is handled by Thermal Rights XP90 full copper low profile CPU cooler. It can tame and unlock 13600K at 250 watts, so we will undervolt it and power limit the chip. Luckily, this motherboard supports those even being B760 chipset. The heart of this build is Yeston RX 6800XT Sakura Edition. Why an old GPU, you might ask? Well, because it's the only Sakura card that both looks right and fits in our case. The newer Sakura RTX 4070 and RX 9070 series are too thick. The RX 7800XT is slim enough but performs the same as this card. So there is no real gains. And my wife plays mostly indie titles and Hogwarts Legacy, so the RX 6800XT still pushes well over 100 FPS in most scenarios. Tracking one down wasn't easy. I bought a used card in China with a 12-month warranty, but it arrived heavily used. Yellowed plastics, cheap paint, and returning it wasn't a real option. So I emailed Yeston support, I found it on their official website and surprisingly they actually answered and still had brand new Sakura shrouds in stock. So I paid 120 Chinese yuan plus shipping and a few days later a new cooler arrived. The swap took 10 minutes, 4 screws, 1 small connector, no warranty damage on the sticker and now the card looks factory fresh, at least from the shroud side. Power comes from a Cooler Master V750 SFX. Early batches had a terrible fan curve, or maybe just bad fans overall? I'm not sure. Turns out that's the version I bought, which explains the discount. To fix it, I pulled the PCU apart, desoldered the stock fan, and replaced it with a quieter thermal write unit that supports both DC and PWM. If you are never opened, a PSU before, be careful, those capacitors can hold the charge for months and can zap pretty heavily. And after an hour of a stress test in OCCT, exhaust was reasonably warm and PSU was way quieter. Now the case. Everything goes into a Shiny Snake L300 Mesh Mini ATX case. It was the Sakura GPU, breathes well and keeps the all white theme intact. The front I.O. gets a Type-C port and because the layout is vertical, it barely eats any desk space. This is the first time I work with this brand and I like the quality. Case is thought out and paint quality is really good. Plastic bottom parts are also high quality and white cables make aesthetics complete. Even though they have a black version of this case, they still spent some budget and time to make white cables for white version. That's awesome. Before we dive into the build, could you do me a quick favor? If you are enjoying these deep dive projects, please pause for a moment and hit those like and subscribe buttons. It really helps the channel. I usually ask that at the very end of the video, but most viewers click away in the last 15 seconds once the tasty shots are over. So, I decided to ask earlier. Now, let's assemble. Crack the case open, drop the motherboard in, install the GPU riser and slide the SFX power supply into the place. Quick cable management pass, click the GPU into the riser and the core is done. 
a slim white 120mm fan hides in the roof to push hot air straight out. With hardware done, I power limited the CPU, applied XMP profile and dialed in some undervolting. We got power limit of 130 watts, microcode version of 104, 64 gigs of DDR4 set to 3200 megahertz, the thirst timing of 16 and undervolt of 150 millivolts. That's what this particular hardware set was able to hold stable. It doesn't mean all systems will be able to do so. Side panels on, first thermal check. In game, temps look pretty good. But the build still hides that Sakura card, and that simply won't do it. Time for custom side panels. A dense Sakura panel on the CPU, PSU side, and a mostly open frame for the GPU side. I generated a Sakura pattern with AI, traced it, added depth, and had a friend refine it in ZBrush. As a result, we have a white side panel with flowers on it. I have avoided multicolor printing before, but the HTD with both an original AMS and the new AMS2 Pro together are perfect for this particular task. Totally plug and play, no hacks, 8 colors right away. I even used the full width of the HTD's bed by sneaking a split down the center of the panel. I told the slicer one half was a different color. Loaded a spare white spool in that AMS slot, the printer thought it was 8 different filaments, even though the part only shows 7. And the seam is practically invisible. 7 colors, a 13 hour print, far fewer filament swaps than a single nozzle 3D printer, and the panel is too large for an X1C anyway, so the HTD finally earns its key. Filament choice became its own saga. PLA prints easily, but warps about 50 degrees Celsius. No good inside a compact PC. Matte PG colors are rare, so I went with ABS. My first two no-name ABS ASA spools hated the HTD 65 degrees heated chamber. They softened in the feed path and clogged the extruder three times. I turned the tool head down so often, I snapped the little aluminum mount arm. Totally my fault for using an electric screwdriver. Thankfully, Bamboo Lab sells that part separately. That was a huge relief. I ordered it at 1am and by 7pm it was in my hands, so technically it was the same day delivery. I swapped the part, ordered 4 more spools, pure ABS this time, and started again. Printing still fought me. Bamboo Studio kept leaving random blank patches, first run lost every flower, second run had ugly color gaps, after reducing the polygon count and replacing the mesh, it finally printed cleanly on the 7th attempt. The panel consumed about 250 grams of filament, but it turned out great. A bit of sanding to knock down the layer lines, then acrylic paint markers for seeds and blossom centers, and the panel pops. It press fits into the case, so no screws required. Now for the GPU side. I covered the PC with special markers and 3D scanned the GPU area, imported the mesh into CAD, designed the open cover, and printed it in glass fiber filled ABS. It was good enough on the first try which is great, but I needed to apply some heat to bend it a little bit so it doesn't block the GPU's RGB. As a final touch, I added two ARGB strips with diffusers so light can shine through all mesh panels. What is cool is that this GPU has an ARGB header, so it can be synchronized with all components, making colors seamless. And here is the finished build from a few different angles, so you can see how the Sakura panels, open GPU, and white mesh case all tie together. To keep the theme consistent, I picked up accessories in matching colors. White keyboard, purple mouse, purple desk pad, white and purple game pads, white monitor, and game pad stands. Now the desk setup feels complete. Overall, they look good and follow the theme, but Something, something is missing. Okay, that's better. We performed some real-life tests and these plastic panels didn't make the chips any hotter. I was worried because the flowers block a lot of airflow, but temps stained unchanged and it's ABS so it can handle 90 degrees Celsius, no problem. 
so it will be suitable even in very long gaming sessions. This rig is mostly for relaxed sessions of Split Fiction and Hogwarts Legacy. So keeping Thermal stable was very important and it passed. This project took more than eight months, mostly sketching designs and hunting down color matching parts. Once the H2D arrived and proved itself, everything finally clicked and I was able to finally deliver some result. And tell me what you think of the build in the comment section. I'll post the CAD and STL files on my Maker World account so you can download, tweak them and I'll drop a PC part pickle link as well so you can see the exact hardware and current prices. Thanks for watching all the way to the end and see you in the next one.